Hello, mighty companions. This is Earl Purdy. I want to welcome you to Facebook Live and A Course in Miracles. Uh, a miracle, according to the Course in Miracles, is a, a right perception, a correct perception, a loving perception. So it's basically saying if we have a right perception, a totally loving perception, it's a miracle. <laughs> so, so that hence it's called A Course in Miracles. So I want to welcome everybody. And um, we're going to start out with our theme song before we get into the message today, which is the voice of your higher self, the voice of your higher power, the voice of your creator is communicating to you all through the day. And what we're going to hear today is how to hear that communication, how to get in touch with that communication, the communication of God, which is the communication of your true self. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to, how do I get in, I hear about this divine voice, I hear about there's this, power, this possibility that there's a higher power that's, that is in me, through me, around me, and there's this voice that is loving, and it, there's a voice that is true, and it is guiding me, and it is trying to tell me what to do that would bring me only joy. But uh, why don't I hear it? And if I'm hearing it, how can I recognize it? Right? Uh, okay, I'm, 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 I want to also know how I can tell when I'm listening to the right voice, when I'm listening to the one that's the best one for me to listen to. That seems like a worthwhile goal to me. So that's what I want to hear today because I always teach what I need to learn because then it leaves one person to be awake. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. But sometimes I'm gone too, I, you know. Uh, because there's a part of me that doesn't want to hear this and there's a part of me that does. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? That's why we're gonna we're gonna do our theme song called "I'm Not a Victim of the World I See." It's uh, one of the Course in Miracles workbook lessons called "I'm Not a Victim of the World I See." So good to see you, mighty companions. Yeah. I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim of the world I see. I'm not a victim. Words out. Accept the ideas. You need not 
accept the idea. You need not even welcome the ideas. You need not even welcome the ideas. Some of the ideas you may actively resist some of the ideas. Of the world I see. Of the world I see. Cause what's happening now is what I've done to me. Ah, that's brother. That's brother John Christmas, and you and you can get that music. So you don't have to believe anything that I'm saying from A Course in Miracles. You don't have to accept anything that you hear me say from A Course in Miracles. You also, uh, I want to warn you that some of the things I say, you might resist some of the things I say. Some of the things I say from this book, you might resist some of the things I say. Also, some of the ideas you will find hard to believe. Some of, it I, some of the things I, I say to you, you might say, that's hard to believe. <laughs> That, that, that is all right, that's all right, all hard to believe, okay? And these are all the rules, guidelines from a course. It says, um, some of the ideas that you, you're going to hear may startle you, okay? Some of the ideas may startle you. Then it says, and this is going to be the toughest part. You ready? You are not being asked to judge <laughs> the ideas. Or anal we're not here to analyze the ideas. It says the reason why you don't have to judge and analyze it is because if you use it, you will see that it's true and it works. Because that's the only reason why you judge and analyze anyway, is to determine whether or not something is true or whether or not something works. So it's, it's something radical like, well, why don't you use it? And then it will show you that it's true. You know, And I like that. So, and then it, the Course says no matter what your reactions to the ideas may be, then just use them, okay? I don't care what mood I'm in, it doesn't determine whether or not my key will unlock the front door to my apartment. My mood doesn't have anything to do with the truth of something. So what's true is true whether we believe it or not, and it's true whether, whether or not we're in the right mood to hear it or not, okay? That's, that's, that's just common sense stuff, but I used to think that somehow or another Something wasn't true unless I said it was. And something wasn't true unless I believed it. And so if it fit into my frame of reference, then it was true. If it didn't fit into my frame of reference, then it was false. But do you know I didn't realize what I was doing was saying I was the arbiter of what's true and real? That's really kind of, it's really funny when you think about it. You know, I'm the one that determines the truth of everything. And if it doesn't fit into my perception of things, it couldn't possibly be accurate. Okay. So the course, I love that. The course says, uh, don't allow. It, it, I love it. It says, I love it. It says, some of it you might resist. None of this will matter. <laughs> it's a, it's a, and none of this is going to decrease its effectiveness. Uh, but don't allow yourself to make exceptions. So one thing I'm asking you to do is to apply this to everything and everybody. Okay, so uh, we're going to be on lesson 49 in the Course in Miracles workbook. And the, the, that lesson is God's voice speaks to me all through the day. Which is, if, and so you could say the Course says God is another word for love, is another word for truth, is another word for all that is, another word for the universe, another word for that which created us. So I love the word love in truth. Um, so it's possible for you to listen to the voice that is guiding you, the Course says, all through the day, okay? And 
it's possible to listen to your guidance. See, the premise of the course is that each and every one of us have an inner divine voice and a divinity and a spirit within us that is constantly guiding us all the time so that we can have the kind of perfect peace and joy and happiness that we want from within. But we have lost the ability to hear it and communicate with it. So, so the premise that it says is that I'm the divine repetition teacher. Um, I'm the remembering coach. That's what I call myself. Is it's, I want to remember what I'm being told to do to have what I want. Don't you think that's a worthwhile goal? I want to remember what I'm being told to have what I want. If I told the average person that I had a million dollar check that was under that chair in that other room, and if they just went in there and got it, they could have a million dollars. How much do you think they would be paying attention to what I was saying about <laughs> where the check was located? Right? If they, if they would be riveted on my every word if they really wanted to get that million dollar check. That's my approach with the truth. It's like the only time a person doesn't pay any attention to something that's trying to give them what they want is basically because they don't believe that this is going to get it give it to them. You never have to have a problem with a person's attention if they think what you're about to tell them is going to get them what they want. So the Course is saying to me, um, there's a way for you to listen to your guidance all day long and I create a lot of drama on yourself without interrupting your regular activities in any way. So you can still be doing all the regular stuff you do all day and still be hearing some sanity that's trying to guide you through the day. Do you know that it also says that you can tell the part of your mind that has the truth in it? But like, well, how do I tell that when I'm dealing with the part of my mind that has the truth in it? Well, the part of your mind that has the truth in it is in constant communication with God, which is the same as saying the part of you that has truth is in constant communication with love, and it's in constant communication with that which created it. So your real self is in com constant communication with that which created you. Your true self is not asking the question, is there a creator? Did I create myself? Is there a God? That your true self does not have any of those issues because it's in constant communication with spirit and that which created it. Okay, you with me? Okay, so it's possible that you could be listening to the part of you that will keep you from getting in a lot of crappy situations and it's trying to talk to you all day long, and it can do it even when you are driving and texting. <laughs> I just did that. It can be washing dishes, walking down the street, in your relationship. There's a part of you that as soon as you saw them, that voice said, no. <laughs> don't, don't do that. You know, right? So, and I love it when it says, of course, it's whether you, whether you are aware of it or not, you know. Um, so it's the other part of your mind. Do you know that then, okay, if there's a part of me that's listening to the sanity and the love and the peace and the calm and joy, because I, I, was, I was talking about this this morning, I wanted to really go through this fully today because I have more time. Uh, but he says, the Course says, but it's the other part of you that functions in the world. And it's the other part of your mind that obeys the laws of the world, which was the course called the laws of fear, the rules of fear, the rules of separation. And it says, you can tell when you're listening to the part of your voice that's obeying what you were programmed at from the time you were born from the world, because that's the part of you that's constantly, constantly distracted, disorganized, and highly uncertain. Not regular uncertain, but oh, highly nice. uncertain, okay? So, so that means in the room, all of us, according to this, we have two parts to our mind. Let's, let's pretend we have two parts to our mind. One part of my mind is in constant communication with sanity and love. The other part of my mind is believing all the crazy stuff that the world has told me since I was born. And that's the part of me that's going, what the hell is going on? I'm distracted, I'm disorganized. It's the part of my mind that obeys the laws of separation, fear, division, 
uh, uh, that's the guilt, anger, that I'm a body that's just that. I'm not an eternal spiritual being expressing myself through a physical body. I am the physical body that's going to die one day is what the world teaches me. And that sounds pretty cold-blooded. And then God, <laughs> on the other hand, is telling me, you know, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. You know, that this part of me says, I, I would not create you to kill you. I would not create you for you to die. I actually want you to, to know that you are an extension of me and you will live forever, but you are not aware of it because you're listening to the part of your mind that's obeying the world's laws and that functions in the world, the part of you with the social security number, the part of you with the social security number, that's the one you're listening to all the time. And you know that joke is distracted, disorganized, and highly uncertain. Or just, oh, in Colorado, just plain high. <laughs> <laughs> I have been highly uncertain. <laughs> I've been highly uncertain. <laughs> Hope so. <laughs> don't forget to laugh. That's how we got here in the first place. We forgot to laugh. We forgot to laugh. Forgot to laugh. When, the book, when the Course of Miracles told me that, I thought that was hilarious. It's a joke you forgot to laugh at. It's a joke that you could be separate from love, separate from life, separate from goodness, separate from peace, separate from freedom. It's it's a joke, y'all. It's a joke you're forgetting. You're not getting that you're forgetting to laugh at, because you're listening to the part of you that believes what the world taught you, which is basically you're separate and a victim. That, that everything about you is being controlled and created by something outside of yourself, and you're this little bitty person against this big old world, and so you're basically a victim of the world you see. So, so you have one part of the mind that says I'm responsible, and then you have another part that's saying it's your fault. If you were different, I'd be happy. Okay. This is paragraph one. Okay, I love the Course in Miracles. It's the cheesecake of truth. <laughs> like, you know, you know, cheesecake, you have to kind of like nibble it. You, you can't grab a cheesecake usually and go, <laughs> that's the way this is. It says, nibble me. You know, I have to say that just the other night. <laughs> now, <laughs> I'm channeling. I'm not responsible for anything that's coming through me. <laughs> See, you're correct. That's right. That's just what happens when you tell joy to use your body. <laughs> and so the part, so how do you know when you are dealing with the part of yourself that's really listening to God, that's listening to the truth? It is calm, it is relaxed, and it is certain. So when you're really listening to your true self, if you want to know how you can tell when you're listening to your real self, you, it gives you a feeling of calm and rest and certainty. That's the way love's voice will talk to you. When you are hearing the voice of someone that truly loves you and, and they're speaking to you in love, you will feel calm, you will feel restful, you will feel certain. So that part of you is really the only part of you. So your real self is calm and certain, and the you that believes you, what the world taught you and your past taught you that you are, is the one that's distracted and full of doubt. So I'm telling you that according to this, the only part of you that's real is the part of you that is lovable, and loving and loved. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Anybody want some cheesecake? Hey. <laughs> it's like, it's, 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 this reminds me, it, 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 it was tempting me to do reverse trash talking. <laughs> reverse trash talking is a trip. It, you know, it is. You know, reverse trash talking is me saying, you know, you are loved and, re and relaxed and calm and, and a beautiful person to be around. <laughs> when I'm around you, I just want to give you gifts. <laughs> That's reverse trash talk. <laughs> I love that. You know, your magnificent lips. <laughs> part of you that is calm and at rest and the part of you that's certain, it's the only part of you that's real whether you know it or not. 
So that doesn't mean you necessarily agree with me or even know that. As a matter of fact, the part of you that doesn't believe what I just said about you being on the loving, that part of you has no interest in what I'm saying. What's up? So whenever I'm teaching, I'm talking to the part, the part of the person that wants to hear what I have to say, and I'm talking to the part of the person that doesn't want to hear what I have to say. That's what's always happening when you're talking to anybody. So the Course says that the other part of you, now this sounds more like me, especially back in my party days, says the other part of you is a wild illusion. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Frantic and distraught. <laughs> and without any kind of reality. So the part of you that's not you, the part of you that you make up about you or your childhood made up or your past experience made up or your environment made up or your society made up, you can tell when you're paying attention to that part of your mind because you feel wild, frantic, and distraught about something. So whatever area of your life that you're feeling distraught in, that's the area of your life that you're listening to the wrong, untrue part of yourself. Don't follow its advice. So I love how the Course gives very powerful instructions about how to deal with this voice that's, that causes frantic feelings and distraction. So, well, how do you deal with it? He said, well, try not to listen to it. <laughs> I'm waiting for some deep. Yeah. Try not to listen to it, Purdy. <laughs> the voice that makes you feel afraid and frantic and angry and upset and like your life isn't going to work and nothing goes right for you and you're going to be lonely and alone and, you know, you're just never going to get rid of this issue with your breath. <laughs> <laughs> try not to listen to it. Try not to, it's, 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 try not to listen to it. Try not to listen to it. Try not to listen to it. Try not to listen to that negative voice. Try not to listen to that fearful voice. Uh, so how do you do that? How do I do that? I, I hear what you're saying, Purdy. What does this book say? How do you do it? Well, it says the way that you do it is pretty easy. Um, you just try to identify with another part of you. Replace that part of you that has the voice that's full of distraught. Take that voice and replace it. I like that idea of replacing rather than just me trying to choose the other voice. I like, I want to replace you. Have you ever done that with a person? Well, you just replaced them. Oh, oh, <laughs> I've been replaced. <laughs> that's, for sure. that's, what Doug, that's your spiritual name. I've been replaced. I've been replaced. <laughs> that's your spiritual name. <laughs> uh, and there have been times in my life that I've been very happy to be replaced. Right. You know, if you don't appreciate me, please replace me with somebody else. Right. It's nothing worse than someone not loving you and appreciating you and then they stick around. <laughs> and they don't and they want you to stick around. Right? And so the Course in Miracles says do me slowly. And that's why I'm taking this slow. Um, so you try to identify with the part of your mind where peace rules. So so that's why we have to start out by saying your real self is peaceful and your unreal self is full of fear and conflict. Why? Because we're going to replace the thought that your real self is the peaceful one. We're going to use that thought about you rather than the thought that the you that's in fear and conflict is the real you. The you that's afraid of people is the real you. The you that's suspicious of others is the real you. We want to get rid of, we want to replace that idea of ourselves with the idea of myself that my real self is calm and without doubt and peace is ruling it and not just ruling it today. Peace is ruling it forever, permanently. Okay, so now we know that's not the thought that usually we have about ourselves, especially if you find yourself upset about something a lot. So what do you do? People go, well, okay, well, how do I really make that real? It's the same way you made the believing about yourself that you are not really uh, powerful, real, through repetition. You just told yourself that you were told that from the time you were a child until you really believed that you could not be loved or that something was wrong with you. You, you don't realize all of your beliefs are just ideas that you accepted as true because they were repeated to you so much that you repeated it to yourself and then that became your belief system. But the problem with that is that then your perception validates your beliefs and so that's what you start.
started to see witness back to you from your world so that even if someone was loving you and appreciating you, you didn't notice it or you didn't appreciate it or you got rid of them as fast as you could. <laughs> you know. I used to end up in the friend zone so much, I just built me a house there, you know, just live there. <laughs> That was the reward you got for being a nice guy. You could pretty much count on it. You was headed straight to the friend zone. <laughs> With the, the cad was getting all the good loving. <laughs> Passion is conflict. <laughs> Passion is conflict until yeah. you wake up. Yeah. Until you wake up, that's all passion is. It's just oh, yeah. that con that's why you say, that's all it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's, like, it's like your separate part of yourself. It, the only way it can, and it can exist is through conflict and differences and separation, right? So, you know, it, conflict is, it makes us feel alive when we think we're separate from our source, you know? Yeah. So it, it, it's a substitute for otherwise very dull existence. Uh -oh. At least I have my drama. <laughs> it's fine. It's, yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm, so, so then it says, try to identify with the part of your mind, gang. What part of the mind? Well, the mind, the part where stillness and peace. He says, reign, rule. And in the Course of Miracles, defines peace as what? I've said it many times. <coughs> total fulfillment. fulfillment. Peace is total fulfillment, not meditating on your navel necessarily in a cave in the Himalayas. Okay. I've had some of my best meditations at nightclubs <laughs> on the dance floor. I've had, I've had more experiences of oneness in those type of environments than the ones that people call spiritual. Really, I, I go out to, to a club and listen to some good music and make people smiling at me and waving at me and maybe dance and begin. A lot of times you go to the spiritual gatherings and everybody's quiet and they don't talk to each other. And then when it's over, they run, <laughs> you know. It, and I don't mean that as a judgment or criticism. It's just that we have these, sometimes I think we have these ideas of what we think spirituality looks like. Yeah. Right? And so the Course in Miracles is saying, how do, you, how do you identify with that part of your mind that's ruled by peace? He says, well, try to hear God's voice calling to you. And then it says, okay, and I'm going to tell you how you can tell when it's the voice of truth and the voice of love calling to you. And then I go, that's why this way I communicate with spirit. Okay, well, how do I how can I tell if it's the voice of truth? And what it says, that voice is going to lovingly remind you. It's going to remind you in a loving way, in a gentle way. So I apply that to the people in my life and the people that I have relationships yeah. with. The person is talking to me in a kind, loving way. I listen to, and the person that's attacking me, I don't. I, I make it a point of not ever doing what anybody asks me to do when they're trying to use guilt and anger to do it. It's not, it's not saying <clears throat> I might not end up choosing to do what you're asking me to do, but I'm not going to do what you're choosing, asking me to do in guilt or anger. Because then I'm telling you that that's the way you deal with me, mm -hmm. that that's the best way for you to get what you want from me is through guilt and anger and attack. So i got to show you that doesn't work, even if at first, you do what most people who are trying to control others do, which is to escalate your anger and escalate your fear so that I finally cave in and do what you want me to do. But that would just make me now more resistant, and I'll tell you why, because I know nothing God would tell me to do would be coming at me through anger and attack. So the mere fact you're attacking me is letting me know nothing that you're saying to me is coming from God. Yeah. So therefore, yeah. I don't have to pay any attention to anything you're saying to me. Because the truth doesn't come at me in anger. And the truth would certainly not try to force me to do something I didn't want to do. So this the mere fact that you're trying to use guilt to manipulate me into doing what you want me to do is the universe saying to me, don't you do it. <laughs> don't you do it. You bet, mm-mm, mm nope, nope. Anybody that loves you and is conscious is going to be drowning you in your freedom and drowning and, 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 and honoring the boundaries you set or whatever. Because somebody that wants love, they want, you know, like to me, I, I like to connect up with people who find me irresistible. That saves a lot of time. For real. <laughs> but nothing could save you more time than somebody that, with somebody that finds you irresistible. They're not going to be trying, you're not going to have to be trying to prove nothing to them yeah. before you can start joining and joining fun. 
You know what I mean? It's like trying to convince somebody to go on a trip with you. You know, all that time you spent convincing, that was three days off that vacation. <laughs> So I like to make the Course in Miracles practical because if we can't apply it to our everyday reality and our everyday relationships, it's hard to remember it. So that's why I take it slow because you could just take one thing that I've said that you remember, like I'm listening to my right voice if I'm listening to a voice that's giving me joy. If you just, just work with that for the rest of the week and the rest of the day, you see miracles happen in your life, right? So I get excited when I hear this. So then the Course says, I'm going to tell you something else. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not only going to tell you to try to hear the voice for God, I'm also going to tell you that that's going to be a voice that's communicating to you in a loving way, and it's going to be reminding you of something. And this is what the voice of truth is going to remind you of. It's going to say, I haven't forgotten you. Since God is going to remind you that you haven't been forgotten. So love is going to always let you know you're not alone and you haven't been forgotten. I remember you. I love you. I remember you. I love you. I remember I remember who you really are. <clears throat> I remember you beyond the thing that I'm making myself upset about right now. I'm not going to act like the thing I'm getting upset with you about right now is what is the only thing I've ever experienced with you as long as I've been knowing you. I'm not going to make you the last argument we had. And then I'll overlook how many times you sit by my bedside when I was sick. But all I remember now is I'm really mad at you because you come home late for dinner every night. You know, so so it's like so it's like the Course in Miracles saying, I'm gonna teach you how somebody that's gonna treat you and how they're gonna love you and how they're gonna speak to you and what they're gonna wanna do with you if they really love you. So that you'll stop fooling yourself and getting involved with something that you wish you had never gotten involved in because you didn't use vision in the very beginning. And then I said, Well, Holy Spirit, what is vision? Vision is knowing the concept consequences of your action before you take them is you being able to see how it's going to turn out before you even make one move yes. and that's the way I do most of the time now with everybody I just I go through the whole relationship in two seconds <laughs> <laughs> you know if they don't know I'm one with them and they don't know the truth and they don't want to be loving and they don't want peace and they join and connect and they don't want to take any responsibility for themselves and they want to blame me for everything then I know that I don't care what that body looks like I ain't interested because I've never met a being in the human form without a body. It's like the body kind of comes with the deal. So I don't have to like, I don't have to look anyway. And basically all women, female bodies have the same body, body types and things on it. And male bodies, the same. they're just different shapes and sizes, but it's basically the same thing. Mm -hmm. that, that's the way I see it. Uh, basically, the, the female and male bodies, I'm scared to say female and male bodies now because there's so many different ways you're supposed to say something, but y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I can't keep up with all of it, y'all. So it's nothing personal if I'm saying pronoun right or something. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's a lot on my mind right now. <laughs> I'm trying to remember this, you know. I'm trying to remember this. So then that tells me if God would remind me that I haven't been forgotten, if love would remind me that I haven't been forgotten, then now it's just told me how my friends and people who care about me, they're going to remind me that I haven't forgotten you. You're valuable. I haven't forgotten you. Love, love never forgets me. Okay that's, okay, that's cool. Now that was the second paragraph. Okay? That was the second paragraph. So what do we do now to take this into the, a, a more realm of practicality? Well, the, the, it says we're going to actually, um, it, the course asks for a ridiculous amount of practice time with its exercises, okay? Uh, okay, here's the, I know you don't have time, I know you're busy, but this is what it says in the lesson. We need at least four or five minutes <laughs> in the whole 24 hours. Four or five minutes. Period. And I'm like, this is ridiculous to me asking for me to do too much for my <laughs> unlimited joy and happiness. That's, way too, That's much. way too much. That's way too much. I'd rather spend that much time complaining. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't have, I, just, I never get tired of complaining, but then I tell myself I'm tired of the truth. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm tired of hearing this truth stuff. So we're going to try to hear the same voice. And what is the same voice going to do? Well, the same voice is going to remind you 
of your creator and of yourself. So if I love you, I'm going to remind you that you didn't create yourself and you have an incredible creator that loves you unconditionally. And that's where I talk to people and what I'm in a relationship with. And they'll tell you. Okay? Or I'm also going to remind you of your real self and your real self is the part of you that's perfectly calm and peaceful. It wants to be ruled by peace and I'm going to listen to the voice of sanity and love. That's you. Anything else coming out of you, I'm going to say that's not you. Okay, so we're going to approach what the Course calls a holy thought. Okay, so what is a holy thought? A holy thought is a happy thought. It's a happy thought. So how can you tell when you're hearing thoughts that are coming from your higher self, you have a happy, they'll be happy thoughts. Uh, and why are you happy, by the way? Well, you're happy because you know in allowing yourself to hear the voice that loves you, you're now joining your will with the will of God. When you want to be happy, and now you're finally joining the will of God because the Course teaches the will of your creator is that you have complete happiness. The will of your creator is that you be completely loved. See, the Course draws the line. It says either there's a God of love or a God of fear, and you need to make up your mind on which side of the God fence you're going to be on. <laughs> right? They're either, they're either, you have to either accept it as a creator that loves or a creator that hates, but you've got to stop mixing them together because that's making God too much like us. That sounds like, whenever people talk about God, it sounds like to me they're talking about a dysfunctional human being. The way the average person's description of God. God is jealous, and God kills you if you don't act right. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, the, you know like the loving God's going to, you know, flood everything on earth except for the people that was able to stuff some animals into a boat. You know, it's like, <laughs> that doesn't sound like a loving creator to me. And when I was a kid, and they were telling me that, that didn't sound right to me. But then I was told, don't you question. You better not question the Bible, you know. And so, the tr so I always wanted to believe in God. I just couldn't believe in the one I was hearing about. Some people don't want to believe in the higher power at all. That's okay. The Course says an atheist is just somebody who believes they're alone. So anybody that thinks they're on their own alone is an atheist. And I went, that's a different definition. I hadn't quite looked at atheism that way, but that makes perfect sense. If I think there's just me, then I don't believe in a, in a creator that's create, connected to me. So I thought that makes sense. It's, then the Course says, then they're, they're just, what he calls, uh, 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 you, got, you got the ones that believe that, that God uh, is requesting suffering. That, that in order for you to be happy, you got to sacrifice and suffer. So those are the two man, the part of the man, of the part of the man that's the crazy part of the man. So the crazy part of the man believes that the only way that you can be happy is to sacrifice your happiness. So when you fall in love with somebody that believes that love is sacrifice, what do they do? They constantly tell you what you need to do for them to make them happy, even if you don't want to do it because doing what you don't want to do, that's what real love is if you'll sacrifice your happiness for me. So, and then we have some people that are martyrs, which will go ahead and hang up on their cross and let themselves try to do all the stuff that the person wants them to do, even though they don't want them to do it. I'm going to pass this around so I can let you know when I'm in and out of town. Cool. Uh, that's my e the email list. If, if you already signed it, then, of course, you don't have to. Uh, okay. So, because, so when I do the Course in Miracles, and I teach the Course in Miracles, I'm doing it from a perspective of how can I make this practical? How can I remember what it's saying because it's the, the, because of the connection between learning and memory? That, it does, that if I come here and hear this and I forget all of it, then how can I use a recipe book that I don't even read? <laughs> right? So if you don't get to the point with the Course in Miracles, if you say you're a Course in Miracles student, that you never read the material and try to remember it, yet you're expecting to get the kind of miracles and blessings that it promises, that's just like you buying, a, you know, getting the recipe book and then expecting the, the cake to appear on the counter without you following the recipe or even reading the recipe. Stop expecting to get, stop expecting to get the results of what you're not doing. Now, it is possible, according to the Course, to have things done for you by spirit, but it says we haven't developed the willingness as yet because of our need to control. So therefore, we are not allowing the higher power to function to bring to us the happiness and joy that is our divine right just because of who we are as loving spiritual beings. You know, the, 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 uh, they just sold the Broncos, right? And the, and the Boland family owned the Broncos, right? And they, they, they it was the most expensive purchase in franchise history was four billion six hundred million dollars. Seriously, right? Mm -hmm. And it's seven of them, six or seven of them, the children, the Bowling children, 
And so they're going to divide up between just the seven of them $4 billion after all the other stuff, right? My point is, then none of them played football. <laughs> None of them did anything in the sense Physical. uh, physically other than they were born into that family. And that's what the Course in Miracles is saying to us all the time and I watch people fight it. The, the book keeps saying, Spirit keeps saying, look, you, because of who you are, your inheritance is love and peace and abundance and joy and happiness. That's your inheritance from your creator, just like his children are getting his inheritance. And they didn't have to to earn that, and you don't have to earn a beautiful, glorious, loving, satisfying, free life. That's 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 a lie. That's you not recognizing who your creator is, your father is. Who you know what I'm saying? And the course is think about what I'm saying. Think about what I'm saying. You're entitled to miracles, states of completion and abundance and happiness, just because of what you are. A child of the universe, a child of love, a child of an infinite creator. But you gotta make up your mind whether you're a child of of a creator that's loving, or you can look at it like there's no creator at all, which is fine, but it would be a lot easier to actually accept some help. <laughs> you know, you can try to do it all on your own. So the Course is saying to us that this is a happy, holy thought. So when you join your will with the will of love, when you say, oh, you want me to have love and I want to have love too, you want me to have happiness and I want to have happiness too, then that's what... Uh, that's what he says, that's what your creator is doing. Your creator wants you to hear that voice. It wants you to hear its voice. Love wants you to hear it talking to you. So that's what I'm doing, people. I'm listening for love's voice. What's the voice that's telling me I'm innocent? What's the voice that's telling me I'm free? Who's the voice that's telling me that they're one with me? Who's the voice that's telling me they want me to be happy as well as them? You know, who is it that's trying to honor my choices? And my it's like I'm listening for the voice of love because the voice of love was given to me so that I could hear it. I'm talking to you so you can hear me. I'm talking to you so you can hear me, but I need you to listen, not in regular silence, doggone it. I need you to listen in deep silence. And then that's what, and then you start listening to the truth and listening to the voice, you be going, that's some deep silence. <laughs> See, that's some deep silence. So what do you do? You be still. What? You be still. You be quiet. I'm American. I can't do that. I'm an American. I'm an American? You are not telling an American to be still. That's the most ridiculous. Don't you know how many meaningless activities I got planned today? Do you know how many distractions to the path of love that I got planned today? I'm going to spend some time with the very person that makes me forget I got any goodness in me. <laughs> because they are reminding me constantly of my foibles and my flaws. And those are the people around you that you allow to be around you, that judge you and criticize you. Those are the people that you are using to distract you from the awareness that you are that loving self that I'm talking about and not the self that's not worthy. Whoa. 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 Oh, wait, hold just a second. Just, just one I almost fell asleep. One, one, one. So deep. <laughs> <laughs> the ego's like, yes. Thank you. So what do I do? What do you do next? What do you do next? See, it's practical. What do you do next? Well, you go past the rock of streaks. You go past your sick imaginings. Of course, you all have sick imaginings. But what is a sick imagining? You think it's imagining you are not loved. You're imagining you are not valuable. You're imagining that you're not eternal. You're imagining that, you know, that, that, that you're not loved, that you're not valuable, that you're not important, and that you're alone, and that you're guilty, and that you're separate. It says, that's your, when I say sick imaginings, that's what I mean. It's a sick imagine. When you think you have a sickness, when you think you have a disease, when you think you have any lack of ease, that's a sick imagining. It's a, and then go beyond those, 
rock of screams in your mind telling you that you are not enough or you can never be happy. The Course in Miracles says that that is actually hiding your link with love. It's hiding your link with God. You, you're wondering why you don't know it. It's because you're listening to your own sick imaginings about what's not right about you or what's not good about you. So I need you to do this. What is it that you need me to do? I need you to sink. Okay. Deep. Okay. Where? Into peace. Well, where is the peace? Waiting for you. <laughs> Here's peace. <laughs> I ain't going nowhere because peace never goes anywhere. It's eternal. It's just waiting for you. Right? Then that's what the Course said. Sing these. And, and you know, it said, but where is the peace? It, it said, well, I'll tell you where the peace is. The peace is beyond your frantic rise to thoughts. Well, your peace is beyond your thoughts. Your peace is beyond your frantic, fearful, negative, fearful, negative, negative victim, negative, guilty thoughts. That's, that's where your peace is. And uh, it's also beyond the sights and sounds of this. I love how the Course says, beyond the sights and sounds of this insane world. Where's your peace beyond the thoughts you are seeing and the actions you are seeing in this insane world because you don't live here? What? You don't live here. You know this is not your home. All of you know this is not your home. You knew it from the morning, you, from the time you were born. You knew it as a child. You knew this was not your ultimate home. Something just wasn't quite right about this. <laughs> <laughs> and because you dare to, you wouldn't even dare to hardly think it and say it because people would say you were crazy. But every single one of us knows that this is our school. This is soul school. This is what souls come to let go of the blocks to love and to learn how to recognize love again. So, so the Course in Miracles says, uh, we are trying to reach a real home. That's what we're here. We're trying to reach the real love instead of that phony fake stuff that y'all give each other. That, the Course says, that what y'all give each other is not love. What? It, it, it's not love. You all give each other specialness. What do you mean? You just single someone out. You single something out above all others that you give your attention to as long as they act right. As long as you act right. As long as you act Hey, I love you unconditionally as long as you meet my conditions. Yeah, I love you unconditionally as long as you unconditionally meet my conditions. <laughs> Isn't that what we do? Uh -huh. I, I, our, our love is a bargain. Yeah. The Course in Miracles says, you all's love, I'm going to have to break this to you, but you all's love is a bargain. And it's a bargain made with guilt. Right? I'll make you feel guilty if you don't keep the bargain. And if you don't keep the bargain, I'm taking, I'm taking my love back, which is the same as saying, I'm taking my specialness back that I gave you. See, and then the course says, and then you all call that love because you can do conditional love based on scripts, but you don't know how to do unconditional conditional love that's inclusive of everyone. So you all had to make up your own version of love, and it's called special love. Now, I'm not saying you can't have a special love relationship if you want to. Obviously, you can. But what you can do is use that relationship to start practicing everything I'm talking about today. That should be the person you want to practice this with. You said it is a special one and they number one and you care. Then that should be the one that you want to have a kind, loving voice that's reminding them that you have never forgotten them and you only want them to be calm and peaceful. And you're the one person in their life that you want to be a safe haven and a perfect shelter for them to grow into who they want to be. Because that's what a real relationship is like. So what we're trying to reach is a place where you are truly welcome. I want, I want to be with people who light up, and I light up when we see each other. 
you know. Uh, I, I'm in spirit when I'm inspired. I'm inspired right now, so I know I'm in spirit. This, this, right, this going through my body is almost orgasmic. It's truthgasmic. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. I, it's like spirit uses me and then just throws me aside after the class is over. <laughs> then I go back to my sane, insane self. No! No, no. no. Let me lose these thoughts. Don't let these thoughts fade away. Oh, no. You know, so I want relationships that we use for remembering the truth together, the love together, the sanity together. I have enough people that I use in my life to forget my divinity and my innocence. I, I want relationships with people that we want to remind each other of our innocence and, and how loving and how much we deserve loving. Yeah, we're going to make mistakes sometimes. Yes, we're going to make mistakes sometimes. But mistakes are for loving correction, not for punishment. Punishment doesn't correct anything. If I think two and two is nine and you beat the hell out of me, I still think two and two is nine. But if you lovingly correct me and show me how it sits. <laughs> <laughs> If you lovingly correct me and show me how it's for, now you've made a difference in my life. That's the dumbest thing in the world that we think is that punishment is going to correct something without having someone change their mind. It's insane. That's why when the course, people think sometimes the course of miracles is ne negative. I say, it's not negative, it's just telling the truth. We crazy as hell. <laughs> That's why no, no matter how far they look out into the new telescope, 13 billion back, they still don't see no signs of intelligent life because what makes them intelligent is that they tell us is that stay that way up far away from us. <laughs> Invisible. But yeah, like I've told classes over the years, the aliens are not abducting people, they're dropping them off. <laughs> <laughs> People in the same place that's willing to destroy the environment that sustains them and everybody be okay about it? Yeah. And you think you're in a world where people love themselves? The court said the world was originally a place where souls who thought they were guilty came to die. And that's why, yeah. and he said, the court said that, that originally the part of the mind that believes it's guilty created a world to live in. And, and so the man that thinks it's guilty thinks it needs to be punished in some form or in some cases even die. Oh, okay. Right. And he said that's where death came from. It came from the part of the person that believes they don't deserve to love and they don't deserve to live and they're not enough. And, so, and, then, that, and then, of course, there's a many people believe that they'll be better off after they die. That, that it's through death that you get to happiness, or like we used to say in the Bible, to heaven. That death was ne Who wants to go to reality at such a price that you have to die? He says, no, you don't have to die. You just need to change your mind. You just need to change your mind. So then it says, oh, wow, I'm almost at the end of this. Listen to this and watch this at least four times. The number four is the number of foundation in numerology. You want to have four solid foundation. So the Course in Miracles said, we are trying to reach the place where you're really welcome. And where is the place where you're really welcome? The place that you're really welcome is in love, in God, in truth. So we're trying to reach God, which means we're trying to reach love, which means we're trying to reach freedom, which means we're trying to reach unity, which means we're trying to reach safety, which means we're trying to reach all that is in our connection and our oneness. So how do I do this? How do I do these profoundly simple things that you've been telling me? <laughs> My mind is oriented toward complexity. I don't know how to do simple things. Okay, I'm going to tell you what you do. This is what you do. <laughs> I need you to tell me I've got to go to 10,000 levels and dimensions. <laughs> what I want you to do is don't forget, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget what? To repeat this idea. How much should I repeat this idea? Frequently. So what is it I want you to do? Say what frequently? What is it? This is some hard stuff. What do you want me to say frequently? I want you to say frequently, God's voice speaks to me all through the day. Or if you want to use another word beside God, fine. Love's voice speaks to me all through the day. Truth's voice speaks to me all through the day. All through the day. Sanity is speaking to me all through the day. I can hear my guidance. 
there's guidance that I'm getting every minute of the day that could solve every problem that I think I have. And I have to remind myself that there's a voice that's speaking to me every day, but right now I'm listening to the other part of my mind that doesn't know and that feels frantic and afraid and separate, which the Course in Miracles defines as the ego. So when the Course says the ego, he's just talking about the voice you made up that's rooted in fear and separation. That, that, that's not your real voice. But you identify with that voice. And then you identify that voice to your body. And so now you want it to be separate. He said, you're a bunch of souls that want it to be separate. We all are one. Y'all want to be separate. So you, so you thought in your mind, what would it be like to be in a world that we forgot love and joining and God and peace and everything the same? Welcome to Earth. <laughs> Welcome to Earth. This is what you experience when you forget that you're one and you should love each other and be connected. You be in a world of all the wars and upsets and all the stuff that you all hear about every day that comes from forgetting the unity and oneness that we all share. So this is what happens when you forget love. This is what happens when you forget unity. The, the, the pains and sufferings that we see in the world, they come from the divisions and separations that we're doing. And we wanted to see what that would be like, but we did not affect the oneness that we are. So we still one, we still love, there's still the same part of us, even though right now we're in the scary house. <laughs> scary house. <laughs> right? Oh, Have you ever like had friends go into the Howard house or something in you, yeah. and you stay out there, and then they in there, ah! <laughs> and then you standing out there, and then they come out, and then y'all go get some cotton candy. Okay. That's exactly what happens at the end of this life. That's exactly what happens at the end of this life. That's exactly what happens at the end of this life. You go, oh my God, we were in the scary house together for a while. But the reality of our safety was never affected by any of it. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know, we, and the, what we call the angels and the invisible beings are the ones standing outside of the scary house tent trying to remind us that we're in the scary house tent. <laughs> and that all the things that are leaping out at you, it's just an illusion. But now you believe it, so you're screaming blood-curdling screams because it seems real, because when you're in the dark, you make images of things that are not there. Welcome to Earth! And so the Course in Miracles is saying, uh, repeat this very frequently, do it with your eyes open when necessary, like when you're driving. <laughs> I know that. Now, do it with your eyes open when necessary. Well, you told me to close my eyes. Like, open, them, open them when necessary. He says, but close them whenever you can. And be sure to do what else? What else? Did you, see, very, don't say the course does not give us specific instructions for how to hear our higher self. Here it is right here. It says, do it with your eyes open. Close them when you can. Sit quietly and repeat what I've said to you. God's voice, love's voice speaks to me all through the day. Love's voice speaks to me all through the day. You can make it specific. Love's voice is speaking to me in this class right now talking to you. Love's voice is speaking to me right now as I drive down the street. You can make it very specific. And you say, say it whenever you can, closing your eyes on the world. And when you close your eyes upon the world to remind yourself that God's voice is speaking to me all through the day, what are you doing? When you say God's voice is speaking to me all through the day, you are inviting God to speak to you. You are inviting the voice of God to speak to you. You are inviting your creator to speak to you. You are inviting love and truth to speak to you. Every time you close your eyes and say, God's voice is speaking to me right now. God's voice is speaking to me all through the day. All right, I'll stop here. And do a little quick recap in a minute. Whoa, whoa. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for acknowledging yourself. That's awesome. That's awesome. All that you give is given to yourself. All that you give is given to yourself. If we believe anything about this oneness stuff that we claim we do, then you're acknowledging me with you acknowledging you. That's how I can always tell whether anybody's hearing anything the truth is saying. Because if you're hearing anything about the oneness that truth is saying, then you're going to automatically treat each other differently. If I don't see a change in behavior, I haven't seen a change in mind. That's just the truth. You know, I, yeah, it's like if I think you're one with me, then I'm going to look out for you like I'm looking out for me, and I'm going to want you to be as safe as I am, and I want to treat you the way I'd like to be treated, because you are me. It's just because you are me. But the part of me that's the frantic, insane part thinks that I'm dealing with somebody else other than me, 
and I'm not seeing my own thoughts being projected in front of me. And you're always reacting to your own meanings that you're giving to everything. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to I'm going to uh, say a couple of things, and then I'm going to do a real quick little recap so that we can do the thing that's most important, which is what to remember. Right, so if, uh, I, I'm a full-time teacher of the Course in Miracles, and so I'm going to also give you an opportunity to share if you if you that's something that you feel moved to do. I really appreciate it. And those of you who are watching online, uh, I deserve it, and you deserve it. We all deserve it. Um, I don't know many people that work all week and then at the end of the week go to their boss and say, "Give me whatever you want to." <laughs> Right? So I am saying that. Share with me whatever you like. I am sustained by the love of God, and I trust that I'll be provided for no matter what. But I'm very thankful for those of you who uh, feel moved to share with me. Uh, thank you so much. If you'd like to do it online, uh, you can use uh, my website, earlperdy.com, P U R D Y, P U R D Y, earlperdy.com. You can use Venmo, Cash App, Zelle. Or PayPal. Okay, you can use any of those. All you need is my email address, which is Earl Purdy at EarlPurdy.com. It's very simple. Earl Purdy at EarlPurdy.com. I really appreciate you, those of you who share and those of you who don't. It's all perfect. It's always perfect. The more you believe that you're being sustained by that which created you, the less you sweat things that you used to sweat all the time. And then when you realize that there's something that is trying to teach you how to get out of the way so it can give to you, you really want to get out of the way. You know, it's an undoing, right? Uh, also, those of you who would like to work with me on a one-on-one, -on -one, because I do coaching and mentoring and showing you how to apply this to the situations and circumstances that you're going through, especially relationships, uh, I do them and I call them clarity sessions. And if you'd like to have a clarity session, go to my website, earlperdy.com. It will give you details about what I offer, and then you can self-book an appointment with me online, right there. Uh, also, I have been an astrologer and a numerologist, soul purpose, higher consciousness, waking you up to your divine path uh, for four decades. And those who would be interested in that form of service that I give, you can also book a time with me online. Spirit is trying to reach you in any way that you're open and receptive to it. Everybody has their own individual path, and we have highly individualized curriculums. People who are unhappy are usually people who are not following their path. They're following the path of others and what other people told them they should be doing or what they should be wanting. It's not possible to be on your path and not be taken care of and not be happy and enthusiastic. I don't look like a person that's been doing this for 42 years. So it's because I love it, because it's my calling. It's why I'm on the planet. And when you recognize that, you know it because you feel moved by what you're doing, and you feel inspired by what you're doing, and doors just seem to open for you when you're doing it. Your life is not to be a struggle. Do not fall for that saying of the ego mind, no pain, no gain. When you say no pain, no gain, then you think you have to go through pain, pain. to have a gain. Uh -huh. So every time you have something great happen, you think some pain has to come too as, as a result of that. Let go of that. You are learning how to get out of the way so you can receive the gifts of love, the gifts of God. You're trying to learn how to be someone who can receive because it's just as blessed to receive as it is to give. All right. The music was John Christmas at JohnChristmas.com. JohnChristmas.com. Uh, you can download those uh, tunes for free. All right. One o'clock on Sunday, Mountain Time, here in Denver, Colorado. A Course in Miracles on Facebook Live on the Earl Purdy page. And you can come in person at 1555 Race Street. 1555 Race Street. Just got to crank back up again. Um, so you're welcome to come in person if you're in the Denver area, but we have thousands of people that are watching online, and um, I'm very grateful to you in all parts of the world and the communications that I receive. It's so, uh, it, it makes me feel so good, because I just want to be truly helpful. I just want to represent spirit, 
who sent me. I don't have to worry about what to say. I don't have to worry about what to do. I know the spirit that sent me is going to direct me, and I'm going to be healed as I learn how to be a means for healing. And uh, I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to do that. All righty. Oh, yeah, one more thing. Thursday is at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, another Facebook Live, Hardcore Course in Miracles, 7 p.m. Mountain Time on the Earl Purdy page on Facebook. Hundreds of classes on YouTube and also on my website that you can watch. I'm here. The Course in Miracles says, just like we heard a lot of crazy stuff that makes us feel separate from each other, we've got to share the beliefs that remind us that we're one with each other. Mm. That's what we got to do. So what did it tell us to do? Repeat God's voice speaks to me all through the day. So how, do, how can you tell when you're listening to the voice for your true, from your true self? If it's the voice from your true self, you know you're going to be feeling some form of peace and you're going to have some form of calm mm -hmm. and that you're going to be feeling. When you're listening to your instinct voice, you feel afraid, you feel distraught. So how do you get past that? I have to remind myself that I am... I have a voice that is guiding me about every situation that I'm going through right now and my spiritual work is to get rid of all the thoughts and the blocks that are keeping me from hearing that voice and to remember it's not something that I can do alone and that I have a teacher, that I have a guide. You have a teacher, you have a guide. Resign now as your own teacher. Resign now as your own teacher. Resign now as your own teacher. Most people are trying to tell their self, their self what to do instead of letting their self tell them what to do. So you need to stop telling yourself what to do. And you need to start letting yourself tell you what to do. And how can you tell when you're listening to the wrong voice? You feel like crap. <laughs> <laughs> if it's, it's not, don't make it more complicated than that. <laughs> and then ask for another way to look at it. So here we go. One minute. <laughs> to say to each and every one of you what? 
watch this at least four times, Mighty Companion, and may the course be with you. <laughs> Hugs are available. I appreciate y'all. Thank you so thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs>